Hi guys, I'm a forester here with an interesting challenge for us. Now, if you follow international news, you probably know that Brazil has a new leader, President Lula. He's Brazil's equivalent to Joe Biden here in the U.S. Both promote gun control, among other things. In fact, within hours of becoming president, Lula decreed sweeping controls of firearms in Brazil. I suppose a decree is the equivalent to an executive order in the U.S. Here's an article about it in the Wall Street Journal. You can read it for yourself. But his decree forbids owners from transporting loaded weapons. It suspends new applications for gun clubs. I'd be in trouble on that one and reduces the number of firearms permitted per individual from six to three. Now that's in spite of the fact that the number of homicides in Brazil has dropped 25% under the previous president, whose policies resulted in one million additional gun registrations. Now, I don't know how this new policy in Brazil will be implemented, but my question to you is which three guns would you keep? I assume that the three guns include rifles, shotguns, and handguns, but I haven't been able to verify that. It can be a very tough decision. Here's a quick shot that I'll give you just of my handgun collection. Now for the sake of this video, I've narrowed down my collection to these six guns in three different categories, and all of these guns have been cleared. Now the first category that I want to talk about is the situation without the rule of law. Which handgun would I keep? Without the rule of law, it's up to us to defend our loved ones. This calls for a dependable, accurate firearm with adequate ammo capacity. These are my two finalists, the Beretta 92G Elite and the Sig Sauer P226. Both of these handguns are high quality and very dependable handguns. They both have a 15 plus one round capacity of nine millimeter. Both are battle tested by the military and a rail is on both that can be used to mount a light. They do have some significant differences though. This Beretta has been highly customized by Langdon Tactical. It has much better sights. And I think you may have seen that in a recent shooting video that I made. Now these have been cleared, but this has the best trigger of any gun in my collection. And key parts have been coated with a nickel Teflon coating. Uh, the magazines have been as, as well as some internal parts. The main advantage of the P226 is that I also have a 22 caliber barrel for it so I, it can double as a training gun. Now of these two guns, it's fairly easy. This is the easiest choice of any that I'm going to make, but I would keep the Beretta 92G. It's a compact gun that's slightly easier to carry and I've said that it's the most accurate handgun in my collection. The second category I want to talk about is concealed carry. I would always want the ability to discreetly carry a handgun. Now I prefer pocket carry, but especially in the winter it's easy to carry a gun on my belt under a jacket. I narrowed down my option to the smallest handgun that I own, the C-Camp AWS in 32 ACP and my Sig Sauer P365 in 9mm. These are very different guns. The C-Camp is so small that I could carry it in my pocket every single day and nobody would notice it. It has a standard 6 plus 1 capacity. There's the magazine right there. It has no sights at all and it serves just as a get off me handgun. The P365, on the other hand, has a capacity of 10 plus 1. That's what it's known for, being able to carry more, more rounds in a very compact gun. And I could carry it either in my pocket or on my belt. This is a hard choice for me to make between these two handguns. But under the principle that the best gun to own is the one that you have with you when you need it, I would keep the C-Camp. Does that surprise anybody? Now the final category I want to talk about is that of dual purpose handgun. 
For my third handgun, I would want one that could serve the role of either concealed carry or primary handgun in a without the rule of law situation. If I only have one without the rule of law handgun, then if it goes down, I have no backup. Same thing for concealed carry. The two handguns that I show here, the Walther PPS in 40 Smith & Wesson and the Glock 26 and 9mm can serve both situations. The PPS was my very first concealed carry handgun. I bought it in winter and it's better suited for winter carry. It has a compact form factor, especially in that it's so narrow, which makes it very easy to carry. 40 Smith & Wesson has much more power than 9mm to me. And it's dependable and it could serve either role well. Now the Glock 26 needs no explanation. Glocks are very dependable and they exchange magazines. So although the standard 10 plus 1 magazine is the one that I carry, it could hold much more ammo than that. Now this is a tough choice also for me to make between these two, but I'll go with the Walther PPS. I can get a better grip on it than I can with the Glock, which would likely translate to more accurate shooting. It has better sights, okay, and I like the idea of having a more powerful alternative to 9mm. So there you have it. If I lived in Brazil, here are my three handguns. A Beretta, a Walther, and a Seacamp. But before you go, here's a twist. If long guns are included, I would keep a shotgun and a rifle and only one handgun. Which one of these would I keep? It really isn't even close. My Beretta Elite Compact. Let me know which three handguns you would keep and why. Y'all take care.